Greetings, students of philosophy. Welcome to the 20th series on the moral problem in Stoic philosophy. I find this chapter to be more confusing than most, but Deleuze gives a warning of sorts. He begins this chapter by stating that Diogenes Laertius compared philosophy to an egg, with the shell representing logic, the egg white representing ethics, and the egg yolk representing physics. But he says that Diogenes rationalizes too much. He says what we need is more aphorisms, anecdotes, which are Cohen's. And then, then he proceeds to give the, the example of the uh, s disciple asking the Stoic master a signifying question, i.e., what is ethics? And in uh, Deleuze's story, the uh, Stoic master whips out a uh, hard-boiled egg from behind his reversible cloak and designates it with his staff. Or he could also take the staff and crack the student over the head with it, uh, lead, letting the student know that he has to uh, come up with the answer. And um, then the student, um, after a sufficient period of time, cracks the egg in such a way that part of the egg white is on the shell and part is on the yolk, meaning that ethics um, is on both sides of the divide between logic and bodies. It's on both sides, is, is that example. Later on in the chapter, um, Deleuze will compare uh, the Stoic master to an archer, but then he criticizes Plutarch for that, his interpretation of that, which is that um, that means that the archer does anything at his disposable to reach the end. Uh, Deleuze, again, again, Deleuze again criticizes him for his rationalization and again uses Zen as an example. The archer is closer to Zen where the archer um, has an aim that is no aim um, and uses other Zen examples for comparing the Stoic master. So I find this chapter itself very Cohen-like, that is, paradoxical, not easy to understand. You need to kind of sit with it and, um, you know, until you reach that understanding. There's word games in this chapter. For instance, um, he starts out with the example of an egg, and then soon he's talking about Humpty Dumpty as being the Stoic master, which of course Humpty Dumpty is an egg, um, and Alice is the disciple who is climbing up back up to the surface after having been in the depths of her body. And um, she runs across all kinds of ethical ambiguities. Deleuze will say that earlier in the book, we move too fast when considering how the Stoics challenged the depths and found only their infernal mixtures, which are bodies. If it is true that passion and evil intentions our bodies, so also is goodwill, true representation, virtuous actions, and just consent. These are all bodies, and the mixture of all these bodies he calls the perfect mixture, which he relates to the cosmic present. All this mixture goes into what you are in one moment. The Stoic system combines a whole physics along with an ethics of this physics. Stoic ethics concerns events. It consists of willing the event as such. That is, willing what occurs insofar as it does occur. But how can the event be grasped and willed without referring to its corporeal causes? or the unity of those causes in a physics. Um, and in this, in this sense, Deleuze will say that divination grounds ethics. And then he goes into a whole uh, discussion of what divination is and how that relates to the event and to um, the surface. He'll say that divination is the art of the surface 
uh, lines and singular, singular points that occur on the surface in relation to some future event. The Stoics didn't trust divination. Rather, they developed a system of logic uh, and they went back and forth between the poles of logic and physics. Um, from the point of view of physics, um, they tried to have the divine vision of the cosmic moment where all the mixtures are together and, um, and to uh, divine the um, not yet actualized event from the causes in physics. Uh, Deleuze says this isn't satisfactory, rather he goes to the other pole, which had to do with the quasi-cause of the event and actualizing the event in a limited present in a state of affairs. So on the one hand, it's talking about how the physics can cause events which aren't actualized yet. On the other hand, he's uh, more interested in actualizing a uh, pure event into a state of affairs, though this is a limited present. It just happens in that moment and then it splits into the future and to the past. So the willing of the event, uh, as the Stoic sage wills the event uh, from the quasi-cause, he necessarily um, needs to use representation and it leads to lose to ask what is the logical usage of representation. So this is how um, the logic pole is um, is there in uh, in actualizing events. And um, uh, so Deleuze will talk about two different kinds of representation in this case, which is sensible representation, which in terms of language refers to denotation, or uh, and then there's rational representation, which is uh, signification, uh, the meaning of concepts and, and so forth. And um, representation gets contrasted with expression. Um, so uh, representation will um, encompass and envelop an expression. And this expression is sense. So for any representation to have any kind of a life, it uh, needs to um, uh, encompass or envelop sense, expression. Deleuze will use the perception of death in a state of affairs or the concept mortal to illustrate this point about representation um, because both of these are deprived of sense until the actual event of dying. That we are mortal is an apodictic knowledge, mean a necessary knowledge. It um, has no sense without the impersonal event of death and its problematic structure of where and when. Now, this again, I see um, in this chapter, he's, he's doing a little bit of a word game because he talks about the moral problem in Stoic philosophy, but he does not mention any kind of moral problem. However, the only time he mentions a problematic structure is related to the concept mortal. So almost like moral, but mortal. The Stoic sage identifies with the quasi-cause. In effect, he becomes the quasi-cause by willing the embodiment of the event in a state of affairs. Um, this is where Deleuze uh, brings in the metaphor of the archer and uh, criticizes Plutarch for his interpretation, but gives one uh, more like Zen Buddhism. About that, he'll say, the bowman must reach a point where the aim is also not the aim. That is the bowman himself where the arrow flies over the straight line while creating its own target, where the surface of the target is also the line and the point, the bowman, the shooting of the arrow and of what is shot at. This is the oriental stoic will as proerasis, 
Now, proeresis means the power. Proeresis means the power of considered decision making. So Deleuze will compare this embodiment of the event, actualizing the event in a state of affairs to a dramatization. He says that the Stoic sage is like an actor at the instant of the event, whereas the character is the event before it's actualized and after it's actualized along the uh, timeline of the ion. This notion of the dramatization of uh, embodying the event in a state of affairs, actualizing the event, has a close um, connection with the same ideas in Deleuze's previous book, Difference and Repetition. In that book, he talked about the actualization of ideas, uh, bringing ideas down into the surface as a dramatization. And um, also he talks about how the whole world is an egg. So there's another connection between this chapter and his previous book. Um, so it can be useful to uh, look up in that section in the previous book. The actor acts at the instant of the actualization of the event, the embodiment of the event. And it is in this way that the actor represents the event and um, the event in its limited present where it actually happens, he says, is taught because it has all the aspects of the event as it happened in the past and everything that the event will do in the future is compressed into these, this limited present. He uses the phrase to bring about the correspondence of the uh, minimum time of the event occurring with the maximum amount of time where the um, event goes into the future and back into the past. And uh, so this is the sort of meeting between Kronos, the present, and the ion, the, the eternal truth of the event, which is um, eternally in the, in the future and in eternally in the past. And uh, this actor acts at that instant and um, this actor is thus the representation of the event. Now the actor becomes a mime, he says the mime and not divination, and that an ethics of the mime prolongs the logic of sense. So a mime, not an actor, um, no language, the mime has to communicate with uh, movement, gesture, and expression. Um, the mime has to communicate sense. So this is not only how the Stoic sage comprehends and wills the event, but this is how it represents it and by this way selects it. So esoterically speaking, we find, uh, first of all, this notion of the egg um, that, that, that has uh, quite a great deal of occult symbolism. Also at the beginning, the uh, Stoic sage uses the staff, much like a wand. It designates the egg as the, uh, the one that's gonna give the answer to the, the question of ethics. And also the idea of willing the event is very much along the lines of magic. And um, we'll see you next time.